Welcome back to the next channel. Is your dog overweight? It's easy to figure out if he is overweight or not. When you look at your dog from above, you have to see a waistline like an hourglass figure where on the hind legs where the body is attached is the small waist like that. And then on the side, when you touch your dog's rib cage, you should feel ribs easily. Then your dog isn't overweight, because there is where the pouch grows, and then you don't see that waistline anymore, and you can't feel the ribs anymore. Now I'm not sending you to hell if your dog is overweight, because it happens to the best of us that we give in to those pleading doggy eyes when we eat something and just give them a little piece of that cheese there and a little piece of that sausage over there. And that can lead to too much weight in doggies. Combined with not enough exercise, it's a recipe for disaster because you're not able to get that weight down without reducing the food or and adding more exercise. So how much should your dog should your dog eat? You're not sure? You can look at the labels of all dog foods that tells you how much your dog should be fed according to weight. Now most labels are very generous with these portions, so keep that in mind. And also keep in mind if you feed your dog canned food, canned food has a lot more calories than kibbles. I mix my dog's food with a tablespoon of wet food from the same brand and mix it up because that's just what she likes and what they like to give her. And I got to a point where she was almost not really overweight, but she carried a little more than she should, still could feel the ribs, still could see her waistline. but. The vet told me it wouldn't harm her and she asked me what I feed her. So the best guess to take is when you go, you know, go to your vet and end that best guess and talk with your vet on how much you should feed. Now that's the food thing, you reduce the treats. Make sure you don't share every cheese because cheese is loaded with calories, right? Or every processed sausage which is anyway not good for your baby. Now the other thing is exercise. Dogs are born to move. They are born to walk. So use that. Go for walks and that means you have to shape up too, right? Especially when you have a bigger dog. I walk my dog twice a day. In the morning 15, 50 minutes and in the evening Depending on the weather, also 50 minutes. In summer, it gets too hot here. So I have to go either really late when the shades are, you know, when it's already slightly dark, that the concrete isn't too hot for her paws, or my husband uh, plays ball with her before the sun goes down. But she needs exercise twice a day. She's a Doberman German Shepherd mix. So they need to exercise and I started doing that with her twice a day out of sheer self-defense because that dog has so much energy and it needs to be burned. Otherwise, they are not happy in the evening. They tell you I'm bored. So keep that in mind. That's just regarding my dog's, dog's breed mix. You might have a teeny weeny little dog, but it still needs exercise. So go around the block with your baby. Give them something. Just a little exercise can change a lot. And if you put, you can go to the vet office and just put your dog on a scale if you are unsure and you have a bigger dog where you cannot lift it. You have a small dog, just step on the way, way, uh, scale at home and weigh yourself, then step down, grab your dog and step on the scale again with the dog in your arms and then you know the weight. So you can keep a little eye on that if you're worried about it. Now I don't want to harp 
too much about overweight and obesity in dogs, but unfortunately, it's all over the place. And to me, it's heartbreaking when already young dogs are fat. They shouldn't be, they should run around, they should have fun, because in the long run, when they get older and are too heavy, they get every illness earlier, and I mean age-related illnesses. It might also be, uh, be harder to breathe for them, especially for flat-nosed breeds. So keep that in mind if you want to have your baby many, many years around. That's something you can contribute to your dog's long-livity. Obviously, you cannot see the future. It's like with people. We can die at our fittest level at 20, and we can be really fat and turn up 90. But then I challenge you to find an old person that is approaching 100 and is obese. That just doesn't happen. So keep that in mind when you eat something and there is your little puppy and says, please, please. I have been guilty of that myself. It's so hard to resist that look. But you don't do your furry friend a favor if you give in all the time to that. It makes him overweight. It makes breathing harder, getting around harder, like with people. Their joints suffer earlier when they are aging and might even get joint problems when they are still fairly young and they should not have these problems. And especially when you have a breed that's prone to hip dysplasia and all these kinds of problems or a flat-nosed dog, you know what I'm talking about. We can do so many things to keep our dog healthy and happy without running to the vet every month. You can put something in their water to break down the plaque on their teeth. I do that and I brush my dog's teeth daily in the evening. I trained her to do that with me. Now it's something fun to do for her. She's looking forward to it. You can clean the ears, put some eardrops in the ears of your dog every time you shampoo it. That's another thing you can do on a regular basis. And believe me, that makes a huge difference. Both of my dogs I had before, Nick's, one was almost 17 and the other one almost 13 before they left me. None of them ever had a professional teeth cleaning because they didn't need it. None of them ever needed a professional ear cleaning because I did that a drop thing to clean out their ears whenever I gave them a bath. And I had upright ears in one of my dogs and I had floppy ears in the other dog. And I know floppy ears are more prone to get problems there. And ears with problems or teeth problems is also a huge threat to the dog's health because it can cause all kinds of other problems. So that's just on the side. But start with watching their diet. Don't overfeed them. Don't give them too many treats. Just watch what you're doing. You still can give them treats. Just do it with awareness. Just keep the occasions in mind when you want to do it. And maybe you give them something that's actually good for them. So that's my video for this week. I hope it helps you out a little bit. That's my philosophy. I'm not a vet. I'm not a dog trainer. That's just what I do and did with all my dogs. And it paid off big time in the long run. Until next time, have a wonderful week. Bye.